Okay, so that's where our frame will sit. That's not where our cab will be, but it will be for now. That's where the front of the frame sits. And we have, let's see, we've got roughly six, seven feet of frame to build. Now's the time we got to figure out a plane. So when I went to engineering learning school, um, we were taught to calculate in all the variables. The, the bus was originally 23,462 pounds. Uh, with a capacity of 28 people, averaging 200 pounds each. The load distributed between the back and the front was about 48 to 52 split. Horsepower on that engine, I think, was 310 and the torque about 640. Now, we've shortened the frame uh, 10 feet from the original 31 feet. Uh, we've also decreased the load rating on the back by a good 42%. We're going to almost double the horsepower and the torque rating on that, but we're decreasing the coefficient of friction on the back axle so much so that we're gonna go to a single tire rather than a double. So if you add all that up, it'll tell you what size steel you need and I'm really good with numbers so I did all that in my head actually no that's I'm not good with numbers that's why I meant the tape boss but the reason that I did so well in engineering learning school is I copied off Larry so let's go see what Larry would do All right, here she is, 1964 C10. This is a 2015 bus frame. It's already set up for a Duramax, which is great. We're gonna put the Duramax and the two-wheel drive Allison in there, making it a legitimate tow truck. I'd like to see twin turbos on it, just because we're getting two stacks behind the cab. This, this looks pretty good. I'm actually really pretty, pretty happy with this, actually. For now, I'm just cutting out this ugly center section, and I don't want a 10-foot box. I do not have an alignment machine. Once I have the string line, exactly square and parallel, then we can line up the back to the front. I'm 100% confident that this is nice and solid and it'll do us just fine. Thanks to Lincoln Electric, we're gonna be using a Tomahawk 375 Air Plasma Cutter and a MiG 260 to show you how to shorten a one ton frame and make it as strong as possible. Okay, so it looked like when uh, Freightliner hired Larry, they made their own frame by welding a top plate. Can you see that? There's a whole weld here, so they made a top plate, a bottom plate, and a side plate in a C. So basically, they were able to drop the frame down and get the profile they wanted. They were even able to change the angle of it a little bit, if you see that. So I think this is 3 16 that's definitely 316. And now we just need to get some 316 steel. Hey, look at that. I guess we are good to go. Okay, aside from being a mechanic, I've also had a history in construction and I've put up about 30 buildings in the area under my own construction company. I decided to get out of that and go mainly back into mechanics, but we can kind of relate the two trades. Uh, if you go back to our garage build series, right from the start, we show you how to square up a building and we're gonna square up the frame on this truck the exact same way. Okay, so I do not have an alignment machine, uh, but I do have a big gap in my frame and I can have my frame doing wrong angles, I can have it offset, I can have it crooked. Before anything else, uh, because the bags are deflated, this is sitting on the ground and I really am not gonna be driving with it on the ground, so I need to raise it up. Raising it up, I don't really care what the angle of the frame is gonna be, I need to have the proper caster. So just by um, raising and lowering this jack, see how easy that goes, I can change my my, my caster like crazy. Now my camber I'm not worried about. I'll get the alignment shop to take care of that, but they can only fix so much caster. So if you have a positive caster, which means the top of your ball joint is behind your bottom one, you have positive caster. Imagine uh, seeing a motorcycle going down the road. You always see the forks on an angle going back and the, and, and the bottom being farther in front of the vehicle than the top gives you a positive caster. The more positive caster you have, the straighter of an arrow it will go going down the road, but the more difficult it will be to turn. So we want a kind of happy medium there. If we have more of a negative caster where the ball joints are straight up and down, 
the vehicle will want to wander really easy. You're constantly fighting the steering wheel. And if you have negative, then it's not going to track at all. It's just going to go all over the place. So we want positive caster, but not too much. We don't want to fight the steering wheel to turn. We want it to come back on its own. And at the end of the day, we're still going to bring it to an alignment shop to get it done, but we have to get it close. They can only adjust it so much. We'll just raise it up to roughly where I think the bags are going to be. It's hard to tell where they're going to be exactly anyway because the weight of the truck is going to squat the bags a little more, uh, but um, setting the alignment when it's down on the ground means absolutely nothing. So I have my laser level because my shop floor is not entirely straight. There's a couple small dips and dings. There's a puddle right here uh, when I get it wet, so that's no good. And the tires are different tires and they could be deflated as well. So we wanna jack up this frame to a height where I think it's going to be riding at and then set the laser on the points on top of the frame itself. Somebody has already um, welded this in place. I don't know if it was Larry or not, but I can't take for granted that this is perfectly straight this way, um, same with that. I can also not take for granted that it's perfectly straight this way. So we're gonna set this thing up on blocks to a proper height with my laser level for my construction days. Okay, so we've got everything kind of height-wise the way I want. It's not perfect because we're gonna be moving stuff around again. What we're gonna do is run two string lines that are parallel to each other. In this case, it's 42 inches. We've put up a little fence here, screwed a two by four to the top where we can put screws in and move our string line back and forth. So we want it straight. Piece of string, 42 inches apart, front and back. That's kind of the outside of the holes of my strut tower. I measured from the strut tower back and just put a zip tie on there to 128. Then I can stick my tape in the strut tower and make an X to make sure that the string line is square while keeping the string over top of my strut tower. So it's just the outside of the hole, if you can see that. That should be kind of straight. Same with the other side. Then I need to move this to be in line with my string. So to get it close, I'll put a string line maybe to the center of the tire. I'll try and figure something out that way, keeping it over top of the zip ties while putting a level maybe on here to keep it straight up and down to see what the difference is there and there. The string line is square and then I have to make this fit the string line. So here we go. So that strut tower to here, like that right on the diamond, right there. I am a hair off, I'm a quarter inch off. I need to lengthen this and shorten that. About that much, you get the idea. Um, every time making sure that 28 right there. X again, one thirty four and seven eighths, and one thirty four and three eighths. So, a bit more yet. You get the idea, make it square, make that fit there. I'll show you the end results, I guess. Here we go. And there I have it. Nice and close. If you see that, that lines up pretty nice. This one lines up pretty nice. Uh, my distances are right. My X is correct. Now I get to set my heights again on all four corners to make sure that the front isn't doing this to the back and vice versa. So I have it about 90%. And I have this now 100% front to back. According to my measurements from the inside of the rim to that piece, it's like uh, three eighths of an inch longer than that side. So they didn't do that perfect. I'm going off of the tires um, and the rim. So I'm going off the rim on the inside to the string line, um, inside of the rim to the string line, and then off of the shock tower to the back, um, you can see my zip tie right there and right there, and then X that, and then line the center of the axle to that, and to that, and to that. 
And then we'll set our heights again. With the laser level on the front of the frame, side to side, on the strut towers, side to side, on the back of the frame, side to side, making sure that that's all straight and true. We put the laser level on the front of the frame and on top of the back axle. I didn't worry about the, anything behind the back axle. I'm as close as I can possibly get to having a true frame. So we're gonna start cutting the pieces out for the side. Um, we'll mock those up. The front of this is an inch and seven sixteenths higher than the back, but if this frame is level and the back frame is level, ideally when I drop my frame down, I want this center section to be level as well. We'll, we'll see how we make out, so here we go. Okay, so I've measured where my angle starts, where I think it kind of looks good. Basically, we're coming off the front, going down right away. Where This is where the cab is gonna sit. We'll put our mounts off to the side. And then at the back, we'll come right back up again. And I'll just scratch that in. I got all my measurements. So going down after four inches at the front. Start coming up at 67, 77 long. Yeah, nice and easy to don't have to walk back and forth. So we'll grab the plasma cutter. We'll C-clamp this down so we got a nice guide. Plasma cut that, and then we'll just put that up against, make sure we're happy there. We'll put a fold here going out, and then we'll come back in, coming up, and we'll put it on the table, make sure that our height, we have to gain only two and a half inches on each side, so that should work pretty good. So I'm getting more used to the 375 Tomahawk Air. It's got a built-in air compressor, so you don't have to drag an airline around anywhere. Just plug it in. Um, the, the air isn't really enough for the half inch plate like I was cutting for the uh, adapters we made for my hoist, but it's perfect for a little 316 stuff that we're cutting now. So we need to get our frame two and a half inches out because the different in the width. With the cab up above, I can see where the frame rail goes and, and, and where to avoid it. My little brake isn't big enough or strong enough to bend this 3 16 plate, but we just put a little bit of heat to it and give it a little bit of help. Um, we don't want to get a cherry red. We just want to warm it up a little bit. No more heat into it than we would when we were to weld it. Even though these are these are floppy as can be right now, we do want it close. So we got about five inches there. We got um, about five and a half, but we'll, that, that, that little bit is not a problem. We'll tack these in place. Uh, we'll get our final profile. Um, we'll probably nip it a little bit. We'll scribe it, do whatever we have to, to make sure that these are level to each other. Copy this frame onto what's left of our sheet. We got lots of steel to work with. We're gonna make the insides longer. So where this comes out and stops on the outside, we're gonna, we're gonna come down a little bit and we're gonna carry that on into the other frame so that these sections won't be welded in the same spot. So I've got all four of those pieces cut and I'm not gonna drop the cab on because inevitably I'm gonna touch something and I'm gonna disturb it. So I'm going to tack everything in place. If I have to notch or make the frame a bit thinner, I can but I don't think I have to. Looks good so far. And it looks uh, like a little bit, uh, not as sharp as I'd like curves, but we can adjust that. And it's got a little twist to it because the, the frame rails at the front aren't exactly straight. But once we weld our top and our bottom plate on, cross members in, um, no problems. So here we go. Okay, so I'm ready to weld in my first sheet. Uh, I put little ovals in it, just like Larry did. I've cut two of uh, the top sections for my frame rail. While I was laying in bed last night, I'm like, hey, I have a plasma cutter. I should cut little tabs on this thing. I'll put the folds in there where they're supposed to go, then drop it down, and then I'll notch this, just that um, 3 16 I'll weld everything in place, and then I'll fold these tabs over and weld them to the face here. So essentially, this is what it's gonna look like. The up profile for the front, We've got our angle in there to bring it out two and a half, and then we got it going back up again. And the plasma is really nice because you can see it doesn't really get a hot. As for warping, it's not warped at all, um, cutting whatever profile you want out. If you were to do that with a torch, um, your sheet would be all crooked. So I'm going to weld that in. 
But before we do that, I'm gonna put my string lines back up again and remeasure everything. So here we go. Okay, so for our frame that we're gonna be welding, we're gonna be using the Lincoln 260 MIG. Uh, nice little unit, uh, definitely not light, about 250 pounds, got your typical stuff. 110 outlets, uh, your connections for your aluminum guns, cup holders, but uh, the nicest thing about this is actually the control panel. I especially like the user interface and how easy it is to change back and forth to different settings. It also has a save setting that allows you to go back to that perfect weld that you once made two weeks ago and you forget what those settings were. When you put in your gauge thickness and your gas and your um, size wire, it'll give you the recommended voltage and speed but I find that they're a little bit high usually and I usually play with them a little bit to get that perfect weld. And it's so nice to just be able to go back into your save settings and grab that weld that was working uh, once upon a time. All right, as it sits right now, it's attached so it can't lengthen or shorten anymore other than the wiggle in it. So it's still plenty weak until that top plate is on. It, it's still pretty flexible. Okay, so basically now it's just a rinse and repeat. We've welded this to the old frame on the inside, on both sides there, but this flare goes in just a hair. So we'll weld this all solid first and then we'll warm it up. We've got a notch uh, here, so you can see we welded it on the one side. Once we fold it over, we'll weld it more on that side. Um, on the back here, We've welded it all the way along at the top, all the way along at the bottom, all the way along on the inside as best as we can. Uh, we'll flip it over and then we'll be able to weld to the bottom of this as well. Even though we come up and hit it to the bottom here, we've welded the eyelets at the back here um, and then all the way down the back side there as well. Again, this is a one ton. Um, we're, we're planning on beefing that up a little bit, so um, the air ride should give us enough of a comfortable ride. It's independent front suspension, and it's also only two-wheel drive. So if it's too stiff or whatever, we can worry about that. I just don't want it cracking in half. Oh, I'm hitting. I'm hitting. Where am I hitting? Let's take a little peek -see. I still got room. Oh. Oh, but I'm shifted the cab. That's right. I slide the cab over. You can see that the frame rail, this frame rail, it's pretty darn close to this this rail, but it's actually the tab. It's sitting on a tab on both sides, so we should be able to clear that, and then uh, we'll be golden. And if anything else, we'll just nip that right there. But I could drop the cab another, probably three inches. That is awesome. And then I have to make a hump for my transmission because my drive shaft isn't gonna clear my, my floor. That's as low as I can possibly go. Love it. Here we go. say that is a beautiful thing um, those frame rails just miss uh, I guess that one's hitting right there I might have to notch that a little bit and you see that's uh, sitting on little rails underneath there so that leaves just enough room for me to slide this forward and then I'll make another rail to go between the two and then that thing can go right there Perfect, oh man. Anyway, I'm gonna finish welding up because it's after seven and I know nothing good happens after seven except the hydro gets cheaper. So let's uh, put the old Lincoln to use. We'll weld her solid. I'm gonna make a transmission mount, figure out my U-joint angle. I think I can drop the transmission a little bit. We'll make it so it's a little bit adjustable. And then uh, I got a moving rolling truck. Wow, that's fantastic. Here we go.
looks like a frame. That is the original transmission mount and that doesn't line up with anything. So we'll change that up. I couldn't bang these tabs over because there was a giant transmission in the way. I found this cross member still in the old section. Uh, I'll clean that up a little bit. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just already starting to get scale on it. We'll figure out what we're gonna do with this whole body. But I made a plate with four holes in it. We'll drill straight through and then I made extra plates to go on the back and we'll put some, weld some nuts to the back of that. And then that will hold it up and we can roll it out. But first, I'm gonna finish my cut. Okay, we got it tacked in place, both sides. We'll put our transmission mount in, see if she holds. If you hear two snaps, it's really bad. Yeah, look at that. We have a chassis. It's about ready to roll. I'm gonna roll it outside, pull the engine and transmission out real quick. We'll finish welding up the other tabs that I couldn't get to because of the transmission. Then we can secure the transmission mount. Okay, so we've got the axles ratchet strap with my heaviest duty ratchet straps. Um, we've got our cross member bolted in. So we're ready to roll it back outside and flip it like one of those RC cars that, that's able to go both ways. Sadly, the straps did not make it. They are, they're dead. So, can't take the full weight of a frame, but I'm pretty happy with how, how that's turning out now, actually. If we wanted to, we could even run a bead on the inside and we might do that. I think I can get the gun in there. That'll be super duper strong. Before we get too far, we wanna weld everything that we can on the inside. So we're gonna weld a bead where the new plate matches the old plate. And then we'll get inside as best as we can. I think we ran beads there already. So we're good there. Also the ones at the back here on the inside. And then we'll still put a plate that comes down and completely boxes it in. But might as well run a bead on the inside there. Um, I should have cleaned this better. That was one thing I didn't think of is crawling underneath and like, okay, I'm gonna be welding that later. I should hit it with a grinder now. Now it's awkward to get in there with the grinder, but well, uh, it, it's not bad, so we should be all right. Always those things you don't think about. Okay, so I can get out these welds really nice and they turned out really well. Um, we flipped it over so I can do the bottom of the tabs. They turned out really well and I thought I'd just jam my gun in there and do the inside of the frame. I stitched it a little bit, but I'm get, I, I can't move my gun in the right position. Um, not that it's necessary, it's kind of overkill, but I thought I'd run it on the inside. Just, hey, why not? So I've got the bolts uh, drilled through the side. When I made my plates, I drilled four of them. We'll put one plate on the inside, then while while we can get at it, I'll weld the nuts to the plate and weld the plate to the frame. That way we can pull the, the, the transmission mount in case we want to put like a V16 Detroit in here and have 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, so I had to put a little bend in the plate and then of course my holes didn't line up 100%, so just run your drill back through again. We'll put a little bead of weld on the nuts and on the plate. We're golden and we'll get going on our bottom plate. Okay, so because I'm just cutting the sheet in half, I thought I'd see how fast I can go, and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this is what the cut's supposed to look like, and then when you go too fast, it kind of it, it kind of gouges it. If you get used to that, you can cut welds in that. If you're trying to break something apart, you can gouge the weld. So laying it on top, now I got a perfect. I'll scribe it, I'll cut the rest of the plasma, and then we'll get to uh, bending it and welding it in. Here we go. Okay, so I've cut my sheet of steel here for the bottom. I got my angle into it. Uh, one of them had the tabs on it, but I didn't have enough room in the steel to have tabs on both of them. So to keep it uniform, I cut the tabs off of this one. Now they both match. Not a big deal, we'll weld those in. Problem with a box uh, frame is that it'll rot from the inside out. 
So um, above the slot, I just welded a piece of angle iron in, and what that'll do is when the water hits it, hopefully we'll uh, fall right back out again, but enough space underneath that the water is able to escape. I cut holes in the front and in the back where uh, uh, water is able to get out. Because I'm welding it, it can't really do a whole lot of protection because it's gonna burn off as soon as I, uh, I start welding. So once we have it all together, we'll drill a hole and we'll use a wand and spray some paint or some good, uh, good rust inhibitors on the inside, and fluid film or under oil it, whatever we need to do. Um, I'll prime the outside for now. I was gonna flip it over, put the cab back on it, and then go from there. But for now, we'll lay this in, we'll start welding it, making sure it's good and solid. Here we go. Now the reason I didn't make an entire frame from scratch is there is a lot going on here. And there is a lot going on back here. Um, the fact that everything has to line up, right? These tires are not gonna be cheap. We wanna keep everything kind of as factory and let the engineers who've spent hundreds and thousands of hours and CAD drawings and whatever, lining everything up, we'll let them do their stuff. And I didn't have steel long enough to make it all the way front to back. Uh, so we'd have to join it somewhere anyway. I'm 100% confident that this is nice and solid and it'll do us just fine. So from here, splash the paint on it, flip it over, roll that back on again. Next video will be either getting the air ride working, depends if I get my airbags quick enough, or we'll be getting into welding the floors on the C10 itself. You know what, the, the gray is just out of place. Uh, I got an old can of trim cloud here. <laughs> I'm just gonna paint it black. Throw the engine and the transmission back in it. Figure it, uh, I gotta get on to other projects, but this thing is so cool. Uh, there we go. 